Alright, we have a special little treat to look at today. I wonder what it could be. I guess you know from the title, so I shouldn't try to create anticipation. Let's see what we've got today. What do you know? A full auto Mac 10. How lovely. So let's take a look at it. It's in this awesome case. Oh, look at that thing. A thing of beauty. Let's take a look over here. First off, and look at that. Those markings. Come on, let's get this in focus. Ingram. Nice. M10. 45 Auto. Military Armament Corporation. Powder Springs, Georgia. This is the real deal. This is one of my favorite sub guns of all times. I like to think of it as the, U the American Uzi or the U.S. Uzi. Just the ultimate efficiency as far as the manufacturer, the operation, manual of arms. I love it. It's one of the coolest little sub guns out there. So let's get right down to it. First off, open bolt so we see right away we're good to go. Chamber's empty. We're safe. So let's look at some of the manual of arms on it. We've got the selector up front, semi, and full. Always nice to see. We've got a safety over here, safe, and fire. I like it because when it's in safe, put your finger in the trigger guard, push forward, and it's off. Really cool. It's open bolt, so when we pull the trigger on the uh, open bolt there, I'm going to put my hand here so it doesn't slam too hard. Boom. Slams forward. What does open bolt mean? It means that the firing pin is already just part of the bolt face. You can see the little nipple of the firing pin there. So as this thing drives home to that round that's in the chamber, bam, it fires immediately. Straight blowback. Since we know this is full auto, what's going to happen? Is it going to stay back? Heck no. It's just going to keep cycling until that magazine runs dry. So let's take a look at the magazine since we're talking about them. Flip open this little flap. I guess there's room for three there. That's what that one is. Pull back this, and there we've got our mag. Oh, thing of beauty. Simplicity and function. We can pull the, slide, the stock back here. There's a couple of positions, I believe. I thought there was two positions. I guess not. And then there's a button here, which will bring this guy down. Oh, no, excuse me. There's not a button. You squeeze the two arms of the skeleton I stock together. And there we go. So that goes in your shoulder. I could have sworn there was another position. There we go. No, I guess that's just out. There we go. Two positions. Took me a while to remember how to work a full auto Mac, I guess. So we got the full position and the closed position. So now I know what I'm talking about. There we go. Now, could you do this normal configuration if it wasn't full auto? No. Too short a barrel, less than a 16. Overall, not 26. So, can't have uh, s uh, s the stock on the pistol versions, unfortunately. At least the way the laws are now. And if you want to collapse it, you push the button underneath. Drops down. Squeeze the two arms together. And it drops right up on top. Super easy to shoot this way and obviously a little easier with the stock out. Then we've got this little guy. So this gives us something to hold on to. This thing's gonna burp and run a rise. This gives you something to hold on to. Super cool. So uh, European, I guess, I don't style mag release, you could call it, in the bottom of the grip there. On mine, I've got a little extra little adapter there. It makes it a little easier. The modern ones have another style, make them a little easier. Let's take a look at what else we've got. The old-fashioned style mag loader. Probably real helpful with the old stick mags like that. Got room under here for something, but there's nothing in there. Looks like we got maybe room for a clean route or something there. Oh, look at that. Second barrel. Something else in there. Oh, another sling. That's boring. So, put this back in. I know there was something else. Here we go. This little barrel shroud. So, this is the shoulder thing that goes up on this full auto. And there's the hole to accept it on these awesome coarse threads. 
meaning it's going to screw on basically in place of the uh, suppressor, which is, you know, that's what those threads are for. And I wish I had a suppressor for this one. They're some of my favorite suppressors too, just old, old tech, but, you know, original tech. Anyway, I guess this probably would make it a little easier to shoot in full auto because you can hold on to that. It's uh, got the holes to dissipate heat, so it's probably not too tough, but honestly, I've never shot one like this with this thing on here. I guess I wouldn't mind, but I'd be a little, a little weary, perhaps. Um, I'm just showing you this. I personally don't like this thing. I would only screw a suppressor on the front of this thing if I had it. And uh, since we've got it here and nobody's complaining about it, why don't we uh, take a look inside, see how a full auto Mac looks on the inside. So what's the first thing we're gonna do? Check, it's empty. Drop it back down. We're gonna pull this pin. So let's see how that is done with this one. Hmm. There we go. So we've got this little lever here that's gonna push down and that's going to allow the pin to remove. I might have to poke it with something here. I can find something to poke it with. I guess I'll use this NRA knife just to uh, keep that pin moving. Okay, now our pin's coming out. It looks like it retains there, perhaps. Now we push back a hair. That does come all the way out. Push back a hair, pull this forward. And that's pretty much all we've got for a uh, Mac. So let's pull this out the back. Oh, let's bring this back to this position so that you can twist it. There's a detent that keeps it in there. And we can pull the bolt all the way out. So this is our upper. We'll take a moment to take a look at that. You can see that it's just stamped steel wrapped around, spot welded here to keep it strong. We've got that barrel. We showed that other barrel before. We've got this barrel just sort of screwed into this trunnion up front, which is a solid piece of metal that the, the, the upper is wrapped around. You can see this little retainer, the pin retainer here that I had to push down. And you can see in there Maybe not with the video, but you can see how that holds the pin. It retains the pin on that little notch there. So that's our upper. I guess I'll mention the top sight, uh, front sight there. Then we've got our bolt. Super cool. Again, super efficiency here in design and manufacture. Uh, it's all weighted so that it creates the cyclical rate. We've got a bit of a rubber buffer back here, and sometimes those can be an issue. They dry rot and fall apart after a long time. And then we've got a spring and everything, so you can see how it glides. It's 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 uh, rod is what glide, you know where the the bolt glides. There's our bolt face there, and you can see the full auto uh, open bolt design with the fixed firing pin. And then we've got a lower, which is again a sheet metal bent or folded into position. It will be uh, just kind of welded together then. Now let's look at that stock from the inside. You can see the, well, once I start moving the stock, you'll be able to see these rails. And again, efficiency in design. If I can hold the button down and move it at the same time. Oh, I'm caught up here. So I guess I'll squeeze this a little bit. There we go. And then hold the button. And now you'll see where those go right in at the corners. Little channels are made. Now it's in position, and like you saw before when I was screwing with it, you push the button again and it comes right out. So that means we just have some retainers down here for the button. Again, a super simple design. The trigger on a full auto is actually a little simpler than a standard trigger. So when you pull this uh, trigger, you're just basically getting this out of the way so that the action of the firearm can do its thing. And when you put it into the safe position, Well, we're not going to be able to see that, but it basically just puts a thing there so that it, it can't do its job. So, very neat. Basically, again, just a sheet metal mag well, which becomes the grip, with just a little piece of plastic there to give it a little ergonomics. 
and to shroud the uh, mag release. One of the simplest designs out there, I keep saying it, one of the reasons I like it so much. Put that button in, we're good to go there. Let's up this upper again. Good to go there. Find this little guy again, it comes back to here. You can see the thing with the little detent. We're gonna drop this in sideways or perpendicular and then turn it. And how do you know it's perpendicular? There's a little channel there. Now we're pointing it at us, but you can see the front sight and the rear sight are gonna go right through the bolt there. So they put this little notch so you can still sight it. Then you basically just push the springs in, compress them just a little bit. And then that leaves you those, the holes all lined up. Drop in the pin. Push in that little lever so that the detent goes in. And you're locked up and ready to go. Oops. Then just check it out. Push that safety forward, pull the trigger. That's full auto, baby. Drop this thing back down. back to the coolest sub gun ever made. Ingram Mac 10, granddaddy of everything newer, lords over everything older. Coolest gun ever made in my mind. One of the coolest guns ever made. And we've had a chance to look at it. We want to thank our friends over here at Tucson Guns that let us mess with their full auto stuff. This one is for sale. No idea what the price is, but they wouldn't sell it to me for a dollar, which I think is messed up. So urge Tucson Guns to sell this to me for one dollar as some sort of marketing gimmick or something. And you will see so many videos of this thing being shot. Did I mention it's 45 ACP? I think we did when we first talked about it. So I guess at some point I'll have to give this thing back to him, but I'm gonna keep this video running so that I can keep touching it. If you have any questions or observations on this guy, if you worked at this factory or you know anything about the history, please get in touch with me. I'm very interested in these. One of the projects I foresee in the future is doing more work on the history of these fun little sub guns so i guess that's about it i'll say thanks for watching and catch us next time